So today I'm in Fort Clark, Texas, right next to the town of Brackettville. And what a special tree to have for you all today. This fort opened in 1852, one of a series of frontier forts that were established just after the Mexican-American War to secure the Texas border and protect the road to El Paso. The town of Brackettville, once known as Las Moras, was found next door around the same time and served as a stagecoach stop. This lively town had a vibrant nightlife with saloons and gambling, but later that dried up when the railroad bypassed the town. In 1861, the U.S. 3rd Infantry surrendered the fort to Confederate soldiers who occupied the fort until 1862. A group of black Seminole scouts were headquartered at Fort Clark from 1870 to 1914. These were a group of former slaves that had mixed with a group of native Seminoles from Florida. These scouts proved valuable in campaigns against Native Americans in this part of Texas. In 1873, Ranald McKenzie led the 4th Cavalry deep into Mexico territory against Kickapoo and Apache natives that had raided portions of South Texas. They wreaked havoc south of the border, resulting in significant reduction in raids from Mexico into Texas. In 1876, the Buffalo Soldiers under William Schaefer were stationed in Fort Clark, and they also led campaigns south of the border and were instrumental in stabilizing this portion of the state by the year 1880. Afterwards, various cavalry and infantry units were stationed here over the years. George S. Patton, after being promoted to colonel in 1938, served at Fort Clark for six months and was given command of the 5th Cavalry. He apparently really enjoyed the brief time he spent here, but he was destined for greater things as a general, strategist, and logistical genius in World War II. In 1941, soldiers were trained at Fort Clark for combat in the Pacific Campaign of World War II. In 1943, the 2nd Cavalry Division the U.S. Army's last horse-mounted unit was activated. 12,000 soldiers were stationed here until being deployed to Europe in 1944. There was even a German POW camp here. In 1946, just after World War II, the fort was closed for good. And today it serves as a resort and retirement community. And let me tell you, I have passed through this area multiple times over the years, never bothering to stop in here. If I had known just how impressive and cool of a place this was, I certainly would have stopped here and recorded a long time ago. Have you ever wanted to stay the night at a military barracks? Well, Fort Clark is a great opportunity to do just that. We stayed in this building last night, Patton Hall, and there's a couple more behind me. And from this motel, you can easily do the walking tour around Fort Clark. You can pick up a walking tour guide right there at the motel office. This is the 1854 powder magazine, possibly the oldest building at the fort. And you can actually go inside. Of course, it originally didn't have windows like you see today. This is the 1874 commanding officer's quarters its first resident was Colonel Ranald McKenzie of the 4th Cavalry. This is the 1888 Staff Officer's Quarters and was the resident of future General George S. Patton while he was stationed here in 1938. This is the 1869 Palisado Kitchen and Mess Room it was actually built by the 25th Infantry Buffalo Soldiers. So this giant swimming pool you see ahead is actually spring fed by Las Mora Springs. These springs were a very important source of water here. The primary reason why the fort was chosen at this site. And so the pool is currently closed for repair. Wow, this swimming pool is huge. 
I'd love to come here when it's back in service again. So this is Las Maras Creek, where it emerges from the ground right next to the swimming pool. I'm sure many a soldier had a great time splashing around in the water here. Pecan tree. What an oasis this must have been in the 1800s. These giant pecan and oak trees right next to Las Maras Creek and Springs. Incredible. And trust me, when you drive in the surrounding area around Fort Clark, you don't see any trees like this. Wow, so this was once a campsite for the Comanches. This was certainly a precious resource and worth fighting over. All right, the museum is now open. Can't wait. Tremendous collection of historical photos in this museum. Here's some soldiers crossing the Pecos River. Now the bridge there is much higher. And here's Fort Clark in 1926. I didn't realize until this trip just to what extent the southern border of Texas was really just a massive military training ground back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Incredible. They marched and marched and marched all over this region. So if you continue on down the street to the dead end past the commissary, you'll see a little bridge. That is the beginning of a nature trail area. Really beautiful back here. Deer everywhere. Hello friends. Look at this big gorgeous tree. Pretty neat back here. Look at all the palm trees. There are so many vultures here that seriously, I think they could pick me up and carry me away if they wanted to. So again, the area around Fort Clark is rather arid, desert-like. Not very many trees at all, but right here along Las Motors Creek, it is green, lush, and beautiful. Just enough moisture to support a forest. 
a true oasis in the desert.